Hi, in this video, we will understand a few key terminologies which are there under FRTP guideline, namely risk classes, risk factors and risk buckets. Under the FRTP guideline, there are five main risk classes which are defined. The general interest rate risk, the credit spread risk, the foreign exchange risk, equity risk and commodity risk. Further, credit spread risk is divided into three subcategories. Once the risk classes are defined, the next step is to group the risk factors because that is like a natural progression. Now, when we say risk factors, think of it from me, for example, a GIRR, which is our general interest rate risk. And here, let's talk of a specific risk factor called as an overnight index rate. Here, I've taken an example of MIBOR OIS. So, MIBOR is a popular benchmark which we, which we use in the Indian markets and that MIBOR OIS curve is a long curve which has which is spread across multiple tenors. So think of it like any other swaps curve which is existing in the global market as well. So for example, we can have a MIBOR OIS for a tenor of 0.5 years, then for one year and so on. So that way, we can think of this stretching right up to 30 years and each of these are individually going to be classified as risk factors which are specific to the GIR. Now, defining the risk bucket, risk bucket is defined as a group of sensitivities of different instruments for a specific risk factor. So, building on our example of GIR, now, as we know, under the SBM, there are three main risk buckets which we calculate, which we call as the delta, vega and curvature risk sensitivities. And we know the definitions, so we have a separate video which is created on on the linear and non-linear risk but just for a quick recap delta is thought of as a sensitivity for a small change in the underlying price vega can be thought of as the sensitivity to the small change in the underlying volatility curvature risk goes one step beyond delta risk because as we know delta risk assumes a very small change in the underlying but then the curvature risk sensitivity will attempt to capture a larger change in uh, the, the level of the underlying. Now, for example, if we talk of a 0.5 year delta risk bucket, then this 0.5 year risk bucket can be defined across different currencies and for a specific set of risk factors. So, expanding on the idea of OIS, if you are looking at the 0.5 year delta risk bucket, we can have we can have factors like 0.5 year INR OIS or a 0.5 year USD OIS or 0.5 year CHF OIS and so on. Similarly, let's say we look at the one year OIS or one year delta risk factor, then we can have a one year INR OIS, one year CHF OIS and so on. Similarly, these things can be worked out for a Vega risk bucket as well. And from a risk charge perspective, specifically talking from a SBM idea, we are going to be summing the capital charge for delta vega and curvature risk in order to compute the number under SBM. Further, trying to link classes with a specific description to risk buckets and the corresponding risk factors. So starting with GIRR. So we have GIRR which is defined for, uh, so each bucket is going to represent an individual currency under the GIRR and the risk factors will be defined across tenors of Tenor spanning right from 3 months up till 30 years. Then comes CSR. So CSR will be defined for a correlation as well as a non-correlation trading portfolio. Now within correlation trading portfolio, we have secured CSR for non-securitization and one for securitization. And for that, 16 buckets are defined based on the credit quality and the sector. Similarly, for, for the non-correlation trading portfolio, we have CSR for securitization which is grouped across 25 buckets based on credit quality and sector. And the risk factors for this is dependent on the name. Think of this as the issuer, the basis, the credit spread curve, and naturally the tenor in years, which stretches from six months right up till 10 years. If it's a securitization one, then we'll also talk about tranches because as we know, securitization will entail multiple tranches which are created for a certain certain position and we'd have a tranche specific information as well. 
For FX, one risk bucket will be defined across each currency pair. So we could have USD INR or a GPP USD, Euro INR, etc. For equities, 11 buckets are defined based on market cap, uh, economy and a sector. Now it makes sense to have these kind of buckets because uh, depending on the size of the company, the riskiness of the company changes as well. So we can have certain companies which are large cap, certain ones which are mid cap and others which are small cap. Each of them carry a certain specific risk factor or certain specific risk pertaining to them. Also, the riskiness based on the stage of the economy should also be captured. That's why we have emerging and developed economic categories which are defined as a part of the risk bucket and also the sector in which that particular company operates. And the risk factor will be the name, spot and depot. For commodity, we have 11 buckets which are defined across different commodities. And typically risk factors will be driven by, let's say, the grade. So, for example, if we talk of maybe crude oil. Now, crude oil can come in a variety of uh, variety, variety of uh, forms, is it? So, we have something like a Brent crude, maybe a Dubai crude and so on. Similarly, the location is defined and the tenor in years right from 6 months up to 30 years. So, these are the specifications which are defined as per the FRTP guideline and these are used as a part of computation which go into the capital charge under FRTP. Thank you.